Well, my goal here with this video is to show which, uh, what components go into building a rod from scratch. When you order a rod, they usually come in a bag, uh, might be some stickers or something in there with them or whatever. This particular rod is a rain shadow rod. It's a six and a half foot or seven and a half foot long. What I'm working on is uh, <clears throat> MHX rod, which is from uh, Mudhole. And this is also a seven and a half foot. I do a lot of crappie fishing. And this is a, a size that I've kind of set in on. And I, I like this. I do spinning rods uh, base all the time. So when you get the rod, the blank, I mean, that's your blank and then you add the different components. I've already started on this one. The uh, cork I've reamed out so it fits on the end. So you start with the blank. You can then you can get uh, your various components. You can buy these the cork separately or you can buy them in a kit. This was a kit it's the two-tone cork. I tend to like these a little bit more just because they give you a little bit of color. But you can actually buy cork, cut it, glue it, drill the holes out, ream the holes out, make them any combination that you want. It's a custom rod. The uh, uh, real seats, this is you know just an inexpensive real seat. It's... Uh, for me, for myself, when I put a real seat on a rod, I usually have the screw end go towards the butt. That way my reel is positioned on the rod where I want it. Uh, it, it you can change it so that the real seat is positioned towards the butt end of the rod. It, it's a custom rod. You can, you, you can design it any way you, you want to do. I also add when you when you buy a kit that has the cork in it, they give you little rubber uh, trim bands and or winding checks depends on where you use them. So when your rod goes into the the uh, hole, if you ream this out incorrectly, it's going to be a gap. So you put the winding checks over the gap with the rod to cover up the imperfections. I've been making these on my 3D printer and you know, just this gets glued on the rod then this will get glued up against that then any thread work you do will go against the rod. Then you have guides. This may or may not show up well. This is a, a guide kit there's about 10 guides in here uh, for a, up to a seven and seven and a half foot for spinning. You can buy casting sets. I've also bought individual guides. Uh, I'm, I don't even know what the kit costs because I'm not in front of the computer. I'm going to say 15 to 20 dollars for the kit, but you could spend you know, anything you want on a guide based on what kind of guide you're, you're interested in. And then you buy the number of guides you want for the rods. And then for the tip, you again get a rod tip based on the size of the tip of the rod, which is the, uh, the opening where it goes over it. And then the uh, size of the, the ring size to match the uh, guides that you have uh, bought for the rest of the rod. So those are the components that go into building, you know, the actual components you need to build a rod. Uh, there's other things, all your epoxies, your glues, uh, the thread work, uh, tapes and everything else. I'll get into those in a different video. I uh, just wanted to cover the basics. Here's what you need to, to start from scratch to build a rod.